If you're enjoying these videos, you can learn more and support this work by getting my book on practical evolutionary algorithms. It's a practical ebook that teaches you everything from the concepts to how evolutionary algorithms are implemented in practice. All the code examples are in Python with Python notebooks for each section. You'll have unlimited updates when new sections are released. And of course, you'll have access to these supplementary video tutorials. Check it out by clicking the link in the description below or by visiting store.shahinrastami.com directly. You can also subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter for updates. In this video, we're going to have a look at synthetic objective functions and also have a look at an example called ZDT1. In order to determine an evolutionary algorithm's robustness when solving problems consisting of multiple objectives, its performance must be assessed on the optimization of synthetic test functions, which are created for the purpose of testing. These problems may also be used to systematically compare two or more evolutionary algorithms. Synthetic test problems are typically intentionally difficult, meaning they are designed to include optimization difficulties which are often present in real-world problems. Scalable, meaning they can be configured with a different number of problem variables and objectives. And computationally efficient, meaning they're faster to execute than a real-world problem. Putting it simply, Using a real-world problem to evaluate the performance of a newly proposed evolutionary algorithm only allows us to determine if an algorithm is good at solving that single problem. What we're interested in is analyzing how evolutionary algorithms perform when encountering various difficulties that appear in multi-objective problems, and how they compare to each other. Throughout this video, we're going to be referring to the ZDT1 test function. It's part of a ZDT test suite consisting of six different two-objective synthetic test problems. This is quite an old test suite. It's easy to solve and very easy to visualize. Here is the mathematical expression for the ZDT1 two-objective test function, where x is a solution to the problem defined as a vector of v decision variables, and all decision variables fall between 0 and 1. For this bi-objective test function, f1 is the first objective and f2 is the second objective. This particular objective function is, by design, scalable up to any number of problem variables, but is restricted to two problem objectives. Let's start implementing this in Python, beginning with the initialization of a solution according to the equations 2 and 3. In this case, We'll have 30 problem variables, so that means d will equal 30. Now that we have a solution to evaluate, let's implement the ZDT1 synthetic test function using equation 1. Here you can see we've defined a function in Python and named it ZDT1. And within that function, we have the calculation for calculating the objective values, where we return f1 and f2, which are the two objective values. Finally, let's invoke our implemented test function using our solution x from earlier. Now we can see the two objective values that measure our solution x according to the ZDT1 synthetic test function, which is a minimization problem, meaning the smaller these values are, the better. Now, let's plot some randomly initialized solutions against the true optimal set for ZDT1. This is a synthetic test function, and as such, the authors have provided us with a way to calculate the true optimal set. So let's use this to calculate 20 ideal sets of objective values. We can see we're going to store this in a variable called true front. Now let's plot them to get an idea of what ZDT1 looks like in objective space. Back to our random initialization of solutions that we want to visualize. Let's generate 50 objective values using the ZDT1 objective function created earlier. We're going to achieve this by passing in 50 randomly initialized sets of problem variables. 
Here you can see we're using similar code to before, but this time in a loop that's ranging from zero up to 50. We're also going to convert our results to a data frame, making them easier to visualize later on. Now let's try to get an idea of how our randomly initialized solutions perform in comparison to the true optimal front. We're going to plot the objective values of our solutions on top of a plot containing the true Pareto front. This will give us some idea in the difference in performance. And we can see, as expected, our randomly initialized solutions don't quite perform as well as we'd like them to. That's what the optimization process will be for. So in this section, we've introduced the concept of synthetic test functions along with an example, which is ZDT1, a popular and relatively easy example. We expressed the concept mathematically, and then we made a direct implementation using Python. We also generated 50 solutions, calculated the objective values for each one, and plotted them in the objective space using a scatter plot. There are many suites of synthetic test functions in the literature. Some I recommend you have a look at are ZDT, DTLZ, CEC09, and the WFG toolkit. If you're enjoying these videos, you can learn more and support this work by getting my book on practical evolutionary algorithms. It's a practical ebook that teaches you everything from the concepts to how evolutionary algorithms are implemented in practice. All the code examples are in Python with Python notebooks for each section. You'll have unlimited updates when new sections are released. And of course, you'll have access to these supplementary video tutorials. Check it out by clicking the link in the description below or by visiting store.shahinrastami.com directly. You can also subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter for updates.